temper tantrums, crying spells, and power struggles. All these add up to one big mommy meltdown, especially if mommy's striving to be the, quote, perfect parent. As a mother of three boys, author Jeannie Cunyon says she was determined to be the perfect mom and have the perfect kids. But her perfect plan unraveled when the arguments, temper tantrums, and crying became overwhelming. And she started using her big voice more than she wanted. Jeannie says we all need to be reminded that neither we nor our kids are perfect. In parenting the wholehearted child, Jeannie gives you practical ideas to help transform your child's heart by learning how to parent with grace. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Jeannie Cunyon. Jeannie, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. You know, as the mother of small children, it, it, everyone who's had kids understands the pull and the tug mm -hmm. and the responsibility and the sleepless nights. Yes. How did you originally parent your children? Honestly, Terry, my goal was to be a perfect mom, to raise perfect kids. I thought, you know, I have one shot at this, and um, I want to be perfectly patient and perfectly loving <laughs> and perfectly kind. Practically perfect in yes, every way. <laughs> yes, I really, I wanted, you know, that, that intensity of love that you have for your kids, and you want to give them so much. Yeah. And, and I think also you're so aware of your shortcomings, all of us as oh, parents yes. are, and you think, I don't want to blow this. As you said, I get one chance. It was actually your son, Cal, who's adorable, by the way, uh, who had a class project that kind of showed you that you needed to make some transition. Talk about that. Yes, my son, he was about four years old, and they did a class project, and it was a book, and on the front, uh, it said, My Family. And I open it it's up. It's always a little scary. Yes. Well, I open it up thinking, oh, this is going to be a, such a sweet card, and we'll all hug and talk about how great we are. And and I open the card, and it essentially said, uh, my brother cries a lot, my mom screams a lot, and she also sometimes looks at the computer, and that's the end of my story. Wow. What did you What did you feel after all you were investing in? <laughs> I thought, children. that's not my child. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to get it right. Mm -hmm. That can't be my child's story. Um, and God used that card to open up my eyes to the fact that perfection had actually become an idol in my life. Yeah. That this perfection, this desire to be perfect instead of resting in the perfection of Christ had stolen the joy and the adventure and the wonder out of my parenting. Anyone, I think, would see self-reliance as a positive thing. I mean, I think we even try to teach our children for years on end to become self-reliant, but, mm. but then it needs to be matured a little bit and balanced with grace. How yes. did you come to the understanding of grace-filled parenting? Oh, gosh. Well, I immediately think of uh, the verse in Corinthians, where God says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. My grace is all you need. Uh, the world tells us to be self-reliant, that it's all about what we do. Yes. And grace is this invitation to be God-reliant, to allow the Holy Spirit to work through me to minister to my kids. It reminds me that it's not all up to me uh, and that grace covers my mistakes as a mom. But there had to be also a surrendering of some things that had become traits in the midst of just the pandemonium of parenting. Absolutely. There was yelling going on in your Absolutely. house. How did God begin to work in your heart to change behavior patterns? He showed me how I had spent so much time teaching our children about what they had to do for Jesus. And I was spending so little time teaching them about what Jesus had already done for them. And I think a, an important part to raising wholehearted children, which is children who live from the freedom the freedom found in being wholeheartedly loved by God. Uh, in order to do that, we first as parents have to accept that grace. We can't give what we haven't received. And so God began to open my eyes to his grace, his unconditional love for, for me. For you, not for just me. as a mom, but as a, as yes. a child I mean, of God. I was having temper tantrums that rivaled theirs. <laughs> I mean, I was the early days of parenthood in the trenches yeah. is exhausting and chaotic and uh, God opened my eyes to his love for me in my worst mommy moments and in my best mom moments. He helped me accept the fact that his love for me never wavers. What are some practical ways that you were able to take that truth that God was teaching you and apply it to your parenting? Hmm. I think it's a daily surrendering of God's love for me and then being a vessel of that love for my kids. Mm -hmm. I think an important piece to raising a wholehearted child is 
nurturing their friendship with Christ, yeah. uh, teaching them about the fact that God is not only their perfect, holy, loving Father, but He is also their very best friend, uh, and nurturing that part in their hearts, mm -hmm. and then also teaching them about God's love for them in their best and worst moments. Yeah. I think there's a freedom from having to perform for one another, from having to pretend that we have it all together, from having to be perfect mm -hmm. when we remember that God's love for us never wavers. Yeah. The whole point of forgiveness, such a huge issue. Mm -hmm. How did, as, as you shared all of this with your children and as they began to see God differently, how did it change their behavior? I think forgiveness is one of the most wonderful things that's happened in our family. Um, we are enjoying the gift that God gives us in Christ mm -hmm. through forgiveness. Um, I used to think that my primary role as a parent was to be a perfect example for my kids to follow. Yeah. And what <laughs> the Lord is helping me understand on a daily basis is that actually my role as a parent is to point them to God, their heavenly father, their only perfect parent. And my job is to let them see my imperfection and my need for Christ and my trust in his grace. And then I've seen that influence them. It's really beautiful. You know, they are boys, they are physical, <laughs> they are human, um, and they get it wrong just as I get it wrong. And yet what we have experienced in our family is a, an ability to enjoy forgiveness. When they mm -hmm. see me being willing to say, you know, guys, I'm sorry, mommy's not the mom she wants to be today, and I'm sorry and I need Jesus, and will you forgive me? That invites them to do the same yes. with one another and with me. I see them, although they make mistakes, willing to say to each other, I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I just hit you. I shouldn't have done that. Will you forgive me? And to understand that God does and receives us to himself and gives us brand new beginnings day after day after day. Yeah. It's a wonderful book. And if you're in the midst of parenting or grandparenting, it's a wonderful book to read. Mm -hmm. Jeannie's book is called Parenting the Wholehearted Child. It's available wherever books are sold. Wonderful to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for it was coming. great to be here. Great message, encouraging message for parents.